Welcome back to Bad Attitude C10. So guys, as the thumbnail says, we're going to go ahead and uh, try to finish up this cam swap. I'm going to show you how to check pushrod link, install rocker arms using both the LS procedure and the ice method that I like best. So we're going to start out today's adventure by removing the old cam retainer plate, which was actually new, but now old because it compressed the gasket and I just want to be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install the new one that finally came in. So we're going to start by removing the old one and uh, getting these bolts out of the cam that I had holding the timing chain on. Now, if y'all remember, the retainer plate that I originally had installed was one of the ones that has the countersunk screws in it that take the T40 torch slash star bit, whichever one you want to call it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take this off, and then uh, I'm going to just kind of point out, you know, I'm going to use some brake cleaner on the surface where the new one's going to fit and the gasket's going to, you know, go to. Just to be safe, make sure everything's kind of cleaned up. So as you can see here, this new plate, that gasket material does stick up a lot more than the one that we used before. And I'm showing it to both cameras just in case my camera turns off, so I'm going to cover it in both again. So the new one has the countersunk uh, machine screws, whatever you want to call it, and again they're T40 Torx slash star bit, whichever one you want to call it. So uh, since the surface is already cleaned up, I am going to go ahead and apply some blue Loctite, and that's just by choice. Uh, it's not in the instructions. It doesn't say you have to or anything like that. Another thing that's not in the instructions that you're going to see me do is I'm going to install the bolts back in the cam and as I snug this plate up a little bit, I'm going to rotate it and be sure that the cam never gets put in a bind because uh, if there's any binding or anything, I want to catch it now. So once I got the machine screws slash bolts, whatever you want to call it, tightened by hand and ran them up, you know, in a counterclockwise, I guess you could say, a pattern or however you want to put it. Actually, I jumped around. <laughs> anyway, uh, I then got the torque wrench and set it to 18 foot pounds and I torqued the bolts. Once everything was all torqued up, I rotated the cam a few times and then put it in the position where I needed it with the dowel at the 3 o'clock position. And I used a uh, pry bar, a miniature pry bar, to get my timing chain back out and I started to tackle uh, installing the cam gear. Well, when I started doing it, I realized that every time I tried to put the cam gear up and went to war with this damn thing and I lined it up and I got it where I thought the dowel was in a good spot and I tried to start a bolt. Uh, it would push the cam gear backwards, so I ended up going and finding a larger boat to uh, help line it up a little bit easier. So, now as you can see here, I don't know if I wasn't holding my tongue right or what, but every time I tried to start this thing and that cam would kind of, you know, fluctuate slide backwards, it, it was kind of pissing me off. <laughs> so, I just, you know, hung in there and just kept trying and kept trying, and eventually I finally got it to start, and using the longer boat, I got it up. So there, now you can see it is the dots pointing down at six o'clock on the cam gear and way down in there, I don't know if you see the little circle or not, on uh, the crank gear is at 12 o'clock. So we're at 12 o'clock on the crank and six o'clock on the cam gear. So once that was all straightened out and I got through getting my butt whooped, <laughs> I used some blue Loctite on the cam gear bolts. Again, it's not stated that it needs to be done, but I'm used to running like cam retainer plates, you know, that have the little fold over tabs for the bolts and stuff. And I don't know if they make them for LS or not, but if I find out they do, next time I do this, I will put one on. But uh, just for a little peace of mind, I did apply the blue Loctite on it. With the cam bolts now installed hand tight, I've got the torque wrench out and set it to 26 foot pounds and torqued them and went on ahead and double checked them just to be safe. Up next, I removed the four retaining screws from the valve cover and removed the valve cover to get me access to the rocker arm. With both valve covers removed, I then removed the rocker arm.
While we're removing the rocker arms, I went on ahead and decided to put two back on to hold the rails in position while I did the rocker arm adjustments. So while we're at TDC, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set zero lash. So the first thing is you want to make sure that your push rods have pushed the lifters out of the tray and they are on the cam. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to tighten the rocker arm bolt until we're at zero lash. So we're wanting it to not move up and down vertically, but at the same time, we do not want to put any preload on the push rod going into the lifter itself. So as long as it doesn't go up and down and it can still slide side to side without preloading, you're fine. Now, if you notice, if I push on the back of the rocker arm, the front rises up. So this right here is pretty good. So let's move to the other one and I'll do the same thing. Now this is on the exhaust stroke. So we're not gonna do a, you know, our final, you know, comparison or anything here. We're gonna go ahead and double check the push rod and everything and make sure after the cam swap that I can still utilize the same push rods, which since the cam is from Howard's, as was the first one and they have the same birch, uh, base circle, we should be good. But I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these up and then I'm gonna show you exactly why Whenever you're on uh, the exhaust TDC, not knowing the cam specs, and if your intake valve and your exhaust have a lot of overlap, if you do set the intake valve while it is at rest on TDC of the exhaust, the intake valve might actually already be moving. If you watch here, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the crank, and the valve, look at that, intake valve starts moving real fast. So, not knowing if you have more overlap than I do, yours might actually already be depressing while you're trying to set it if it's on TDC of the exhaust stroke. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this around and get it to TDC on the compression stroke so we can move forward with our uh, push rod link check. So as you can now see, we have our cam gear pointing at 12 o'clock and the dial's pointing at nine, so we should be good to go. Since I hadn't measured this in quite a while, I couldn't remember what they actually measured originally before I added the preload. So I went on ahead and started at a 7.30 setting and installed the push rod in the number one intake lifter spot. Again, guys, before moving forward, make sure the push rod is seated in the cup of the lifter and you can push down and know that the spring has movement. You don't want it riding on the little spring clip or on the side of the lifter itself. So what I'm wanting to do here is I'm wanting to tighten this up and get it at zero lash. At the same time, I do not want to have any preload on my lifter and I do want to basically be able to get it to where it's bottomed out on the standoff rail. So this, if you notice, as soon as I started tightening it up, it started to push in on the lifter and hit the tip of the valve at the same time so the push rod's too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and I'm gonna shorten the push rod checker and put it back in and try again. So as you can see, it did the same thing again. So I'm um, basically gonna just have to back it back out again. I tried to get my fat fingers in there and adjust it, but it wouldn't do it. So I had to take it out every time, but let's see if third time's a charm. And so here on the third try, everything seems to be pretty good as I tightened it up and before it got to zero latch, it actually seated in the standoff and we were good. So I went on ahead and removed the checker after testing this and finding out it was all right. And by the time we took the length of the push rod checker itself and added preload, we were right where we needed to be. So guys, here are the instructions for the procedure of doing the sequencing on the rocker arms at top dead center on the compression stroke. We need the crank and cam both at 12 o'clock and the little oil pump keyway would be at about 1.30. That means we are definitely at TDC on the compression stroke. So then the rockers you can adjust are the ones listed and we're gonna go ahead and move up the push rods and push them in and push down on them to make sure the lifters are on the cam lobe and not hanging up in the tray. Now, be sure and push them down. Here's the valves and rocker arms that you can set at this stage. Now, we uh, are gonna start and you can see the exhaust ones are lined up with the exhaust, the intake goes with the intake runner, and it's pretty much foolproof. Now, cylinder one, we're gonna do later with the ice method. So, let's go ahead and lube up the top side of the push rods and uh, the tips of our valve stems. That way, we do have them properly lubricated. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side at the same time, and then we're gonna start with our rocker arms. 
Now, if you have a turning upgrade, they can rotate 360 degrees, make sure the rounded side goes in the rocker arm stand and the flat side has the bolt. Now, I'm going to be putting some Permatex on my intake uh, rocker bolts because I have factory heads with CNC port job and they get into the bosses on them so you can actually get oil in your intake rudder. So be sure you seal them with something. So here we go. At this point, since we knew the push rods are the right length, we could have actually just torqued these down and rolled with it. But I had never done the turn method testing push rod length and preload before, so I wanted to try it. Now mine with the Triclo LS7 lookers, they were saying need to be between three quarter and one quarter turns. And when I did the very first one, sure enough, it was between three quarter and one turn. So we're gonna go ahead and roll through the rest of these. And after we check them, I will be torquing them to 22 foot pounds. Now I had installed the number five intake rocker just to hold the, the rail in place before I put everything else down. So remember, the reason I'm removing it is because it needed to come out because it didn't have a push rod nor was it set. Now again, I kind of got in front of myself and what I need to do is I'm gonna put a rocker arm on here to hold the rail in place as we did on the other side and then we're gonna start doing our sequencing. All right, guys and girls, we're halfway home. So the next step will be to rotate our crankshaft 360 degrees to put it on TDC for the exhaust stroke. So that's going to put our uh, mark on our camshaft. We're going to move it from the 12 o'clock down to the 6 o'clock. And our crank sprocket mark will be at 12 o'clock again, as will the keyway will be at about 1.30. So here we go, we're ready to go. We're gonna start oiling up our push rods again. And remember guys, since we've been turning this motor over, make sure the push rods are pushed down and on the cam and not stuck in the trays because when you rotate it around with no valve pressure on them, they could have gotten stuck in the up position again. So you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, move up the lower portion of the push rod, and then we're gonna start rolling with our preset and roll again. Now this time I'm gonna use a shorter ratchet setup so you can actually see the turns of the preload being set. And then afterwards, I'll do the same thing and torque everything down to 22 foot-pounds. Before we start again on the other side, I'm going to remove the exhaust number six that I put to hold the rail in place earlier and get a push rod put in it and get it back on. Well, hold on. I'm going to start over because I forgot to lube the push rod and the valve tip. So remember guys, let's lube everything back up on the top of the push rods and the valve stems before we get started. And now we'll start to roll from there.
Now guys, you know how everybody tells you to double check when you torque? Well, this is exactly why. I missed a rocker arm. Luckily, I caught myself whenever I was double checking the torque on it. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and set the preload. And then get the torque wrench back out and finish torquing it. And then move on to the next step. So now I'm going to share with you the method I like best. called the ice method. Very cut, dry, and simple. Plain and easy. Intake valve starts closing, you set the exhaust. Exhaust valve starts opening, you set the intake. That's it. And here's an illustration that shows you exactly why we want to set it up on the base circle when we do any lash or preload adjustments, period. Now, guys, one misconception is the base circle is on the heel of the cam, and a lot of people think it's kind of like a G-spot on a woman or something. Actually, if you look right here where I'm pointing, and it shows a base circle and there's two lines coming down, almost the whole entire heel length it's showing you is considered a base circle. So as long as you're there, your lash is going to be good, guys. So basically, whenever you set up using the ice method, and even if you just overrun the start position or the closing or the opening position, you have a lot of real estate to play with. So don't let it scare you. So we're going to start out right here, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate it, and I'm going to make sure the exhaust valve is down and the lifter is on the cam lobe, of course. And then I'm going to turn the engine until I feel the exhaust valve start to open so the push rod will push up. As soon as you feel the push rod push up, guess what? It's time to adjust your intake rocker arm. So whether you have a non-adjustable like we do on this LS or you got a stud sticking out that you're, you know, setting lash on a solid roller or a solid flat tappet cam, at this point, you either set your preload on your hydraulic cam or you set your lash on the, si uh, the solid lift cam. It's that simple, dude. So right now, as far as with the LS, we put our rocker arm on. And since I already know my push rod length is proper, I could actually just at this time torque it. But since I'm still wanting to find out about this turn method, I'm gonna go ahead and set, you know, zero lash first. And after I find zero lash, I'm gonna then check, you know, the turn settings on the preload to make sure the push rod length is proper just for shit grins and giggles. And then after that, it'll be torque to spec. Now, once you get the intake set, since you're already on the exhaust stroke, the great thing about it is, once you finish the cycle and you allow the exhaust valve to fully open and then come up and close, it's time for your intake valve to start traveling anyway. So then if you set your intake first by using the exhaust movement, and then you set the exhaust by using the intakes movement, as soon as you finish them, you're on to the next cylinder. So it's really easy. Now watch the push rod for the exhaust. Since we rotated the engine and there's no spring pressure on it, it got held up in the lifter tray. So we need to remember to push it back down and get it back on the cam load. So with the intake valve now set, we're gonna rotate it until we see the intake starting to close. As soon as we see it start to close, then we're going to set the exhaust. Now, if you remember, I showed you the push rod did come up and it got hung up in the tray. So remember to push on the back of the rocker and get the push rod back in pushing on the lifter to put it back on the cam load before you adjust anything else. So I'm going to pop it in place right here and then we're going to move forward. So again, what we're gonna do is, normally at this point, you can set your lash, your preload, torque it, whatever it may be. I'm just playing with this turn method to play around and see what they all ended up at. And right now I'm at zero lash, so then we're gonna put the ratchet on it and see if we get between three quarter and one and a quarter turns. And if so, we should be good. There we go, uh, another one between three quarter and a full turn, so we're good to go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and torque this down, and if you remember, I did not torque the intake one down, so I'm gonna go ahead and cycle through and get it back on the exhaust starting to open, and then I'll torque my intake. But as I rotate, I want you to pay attention to the other cylinders. So, right now, I'm gonna look for the exhaust on number three to start moving, and as soon as it starts moving down, it would be the same as cylinder one was. So as soon as you see movement on the valve itself, which should be coming up right now, there it is, you would be able to set the intake on number three already. So once you set the intake, we'll rotate the engine around again and watch the intake go down and fully open. 
And once the intake pulley opens and starts to close, then we can come back over there. Uh, let me go ahead and torque this so I don't forget. <laughs> and uh, then we'll continue rotating it and we're watching the intake on the number three cylinder. And as soon as you see the intake go down, which is coming up right now, as soon as you see it start to come back up, and you can be right as it starts to come back up, or you can go about halfway up, you're still going to be on the base circle. You got a lot of real estate, so don't let it scare you. So now we'd set the exhaust. Now we'll move to the number five cylinder, and we'll watch the exhaust valve. As soon as we see that exhaust valve start to move, which there it is, we'll set the intake. And once we finish with the intake, we back to turning the motor and let the exhaust go through its cycle. The intake's gonna go down whenever you see the intake start to come up. Again, guys, I mean, I know it's monotonous, but here we go. Now we set the exhaust. So you can't see the cylinder uh, number seven because I had it out of frame and didn't catch it, but it's the same thing. So you saw this, there's no time lapse on this that I just now did. So it does not take that much time and it's foolproof. So another thing that I wanted to share with y'all is if you're working on an LS and you don't have timing marks and you need to bring it to TDC and you don't know what's going on, you can do it by following what your valves are telling you. So on, you know, if you're watching the exhaust valve and you see the exhaust valve traveling and it goes and starts to open and then it's coming up, whenever it starts coming up and it's completely closed almost, if you will get like a screwdriver or something, and put in there and just bring it up until where you can tell it's all the way up and continue to turn it to where it feels like it's pretty much leveled and stopped traveling as far as piston travel, you will be at TDC. And I left the timing cover off so you can see the timing marks. So right now I rotated it. Now I'm sticking the screwdriver in there and I'm gonna to continue to rotate it until I feel like it's pretty flat and it stops upward travel. And then we're gonna look at where it shows the timing marks on the crank. So if you look, it's at six o'clock on the cam gear and the crank is gonna be basically at 12 o'clock. So now if we wanted to find the compression stroke, we do the same thing, we follow the intake valve. So we just watch the intake valve rotate, you know, or go down. And once it goes down and you see it moving down, I stuck a screwdriver in there to verify it's traveling down. And when the intake valve starts to come up, as soon as you see the intake valve close fully, you can put like a, a compression whistle or a stop or your finger in the hole and in my case i'm gonna put my finger in the hole and turn it until it blows my finger off and i know it's getting close to tdc and you can look in there with a the flashlight or you can just do like i'm going to do with a small screwdriver and follow the intake valve and put the screwdriver in there and basically when you feel it get almost flat and stop upward movement you look at the timing mark on the compression stroke, the cam gear should be at 12 o'clock and the crank gear should be at 12 o'clock. And both tests that I'm doing this and showing you right now, it's really, really close. They might be, you know, just a smidgen off, but they're close enough to get you in the ballpark to do stabbing your distributor or setting valve lash or whichever one it may be. So don't be scared of this stuff just because you don't have timing marks to go by. So I hope y'all enjoyed everything with that. And, you know, I wanted to try to show, you know, a little bit of different things and how to line stuff up for the compression stroke because some people don't understand how the compression stroke to TDC and the exhaust is the TDC. And, uh, you know, it can come back and bite you in the butt. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate this engine back around and line my dots up at the 12 and 6, how they're recommended to do when you put the engine together. And uh, I'm going to double check the torque on my rock arms and put my valve covers back on. And I'm still needing to find a bigger torque wrench so I can torque my balancer bolt down. So I'm going to wrap this up because it's already been a long video. And we'll finish, you know, putting the cover and installing the balancer in the next video. And I hope y'all enjoyed it. And for those of you that hung out this long, and I know it was a long one, I do hope that, you know, if nothing else, it helps some. So with this now buttoned up, I'm going to cover this engine up and go in the house. And thank you all for watching. And I will see y'all next time.